Okay, I have second batch going. Matt and Jim spread this on the bottom. That was one batch across the entire surface. Rebar are where we want them. Now they're taking number two batch and they'll coat everything. I'm not bringing it all up until we're bringing it all the way up with one batch. We don't want any discoloration. I'll go get number three batch going right now. Okay, that's two batches. You can see how we're still not up to the top. Everything is being brought up evenly. Number three batch is almost done mixing up. We'll be bringing that in shortly. Our broken stone forms are all right in place where they're supposed to be. Tight radius, square, 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 tight radius, radius, radius. These are all square. Sink mold's not moving. Then we'll drill for the faucet on site. Hey, good morning, everybody. Thanks for tuning in to Cocker with the Hosses. <clears throat> I'm working up here at the garage today. Before I get started on today's video, I'm going to recap a little bit about uh, the previous video. It is not a outdoor grill area countertop. Uh, I got my footage mixed up. Emily did not realize it. Uh, the countertop we're working for is for a builder and it is an interior bar cigar room type setting. Uh, so when it comes to install, I want that to make sense for you. Uh, just wanted to make sure I pointed that out. Uh, so I hope you enjoy the video and keep sending those comments. So the first thing I want to do is grind all this down. Uh, these are diamond pads of 50 grit, so they're pretty aggressive. I just put them on just a little bit off center. So this spins around, they turn, and these will os os oscillate as they're going around. So that is the plan. Water's turned on, and you'll see how this just shoots out right in the center. And really flood that surface. As, as we cut that debris off, you want it washing off of there. Let that water build up. Here we go. Couldn't get it turned off with one hand. <laughs> so I didn't just leave it set in one spot and go. I kept moving it around back and forth. So that's how you do that. You set the camera and I'll keep going with that. Put you on time lapse. Talk to you real soon.
Okay, then we're gonna, uh, with the 50, and then cleans it off to get all that debris off of there. So taking the 50s off, and I'm jumping to 200. We used to go 50, 100, 200, 400, but now we just go from 50s to 2s, and we just stop right there at 200. So this goes the exact same way, just a little bit slower. So there they are, uh, up to 200 grit, cleaned off. Now I'll let these dry. Uh, tomorrow, when I have more people here, we'll raise these up on buckets. The short one, I can put on my table, uh, right over there, I'll clean that off. Uh, and this one here, I'll probably leave um, on buckets since it's so long. I don't want it cracking right by the sink. Now these are have been sitting here about five days. All I did was move this short one away from my big one. Uh, I didn't move them at all yet. So we want to let them sit you know, for five or six days before we even think about moving uh, countertops this big. All right, see you here tomorrow. Okay, so what I'm doing, I just have my diamond pads. Uh, one's uh, real aggressive and one's not so aggressive. Uh, I think this is 100 and this is 200. Uh, I use the 200 on top. And then I use the more aggressive one on the bottom. Make sure you flood the area with lots of water. That way it washes that debris away. Now it's real nice and soft to touch. It's just a couple of swipes with these and it takes it right off. joints in my seam in my uh, broken stone rubber mold liner uh, so I'll just go ahead and soften that out you and I will be the only ones that know it's here
Everything's, all the edges are hit, tops are cleaned. I just, uh, now I did my final polishing around the sink. Now I just went ahead and pushed my sink mold out. I'll put you right here and I'll go right around this opening. Uh, again, flooding this area with water, it's really not going to take too much. This is really nice, nice and sharp, nice and clean. So if we leave it like that, somebody's going to get cut on this edge. So I just want to soften this out a little bit. Okay, so with everything cleaned up, now I'll let these dry just a little bit. I don't want any standing water on it. I just want the surface damp. So I'll come back in about two or three hours and I'll put on my black skim coat. Getting down to our final steps. Okay, so for my cream coat, I just use pure cement and black concrete coloring. Uh, I use 10% color to the cement ratio. So mix that together dry. And stir it around. Give it a nice blend. Just keep fluffing it around until it's all nice and uniform. a little lump in there. Okay. Right about like that. So don't take this over to the faucet and add water to it because once you put too much water in it then you have to add cement, add color. So just put water in a in a cup and add a little bit. Give it a stir. And you can use a, a wooden stir, you can use a mixer. This is how I do it and I'll show you why in a second. Just give it a nice twist and a mix. So that's about what we want right there. Just that pasty, we don't want it runny. Sorry about that. All right, I'm gonna stop right there. That's what I'm looking for. Now, as you notice, there's a bunch of holes in the surface. That's what this cream's gonna do. And you can see a couple of my folds in the plastic. Put you guys right here. Now I have more than enough to do these three pieces. I hope, but it'll, I, I'm pretty sure I do. So these countertops are still a little bit damp. Just working it in to all those pores. That's why I wanted to wait until the water evaporated off, soaked in a little bit. You want these to be damp so that this doesn't dry out too fast, and but not too much water that the concrete doesn't accept the color. So it's that easy. Smear it on, work it in. 
I'll polish this off and I'll take one more coat after this. You can change colors or go two coats the same color. I most commonly do two coats of the same color, in this case black. Now I don't want to slop it all down the face because then you have to work pretty hard to get that off. But I will. Just do a little here and there. You can do the high areas. As much as you want. Okay, now you saw that didn't take very long. I have a lot on this one. And this grinds off real easy, real fast. So I'm just gonna bring a little bit over here. I need a little bit more in this area. I don't wanna mix up another batch just for this little bit. See these holes right here? You just wanna fill them in. You can see how it just settles right in there. And that's why this takes two coats, usually two coats. This is the best job in the world. Okay, I'm going to let that go for tonight. Now tomorrow when I get done at work, I can give this a polish, re-cream, polish, ready for sealer. All right, see you then. Okay, there we go. Everything is nice and dry, really hard. Ready to be polished off. You can kind of see where it's still settled in. You st I still have a couple of holes. So this is definitely going to take one more cream coat. We'll get this cut off. And see what it looks like. So I'll go back to the 200s on the DS301. Put you on time lapse. Talk to you real soon. Sorry, I'll stay with the 200s and, and start cutting these off. So this is about what I'm looking for, about a 50-50 mix. I like the veining from my plastic marks all through here. Same thing over here, I got some nice big ones. 
coming through here all that looks I, I really like that look so you just try and get a, a desired look you know nice and even across the surface of course, I'll have to do this with a hand pad right there. So I'll bring you for a close-up. You can see how it starts to show through. So as you're polishing, just take it down slowly until you get the look you're looking for, the desired look. So on these skinny pieces, I just take a hand pad and do the edges. You can see how I have a little strip around the perimeter that the machine uh, wants to just tilt over and it really chews up the blades or pads real fast. So a couple swipes with this, lots of water. Try and keep going like in a circular motion. Not a lot of pressure, just let it cut through slowly so you don't take too much off. So that was about 30 seconds, 45 seconds. You can see the color really starting to shine through. Another plastic vein. There's some there. So you just want them to look kind of natural, I think. And cut them. That's, that's what I look for. That's what I like. Personal preference. Somebody may hate it. I think it's pretty cool looking. I'll get this piece finished up and get ready to start cream coating. Okay, now I just gave them a final cleaning. I went around and hit the faces, trying to get these more evened up. Now I'm not gonna stop there. We're gonna give the faces one more coat. I don't like the splotchiness. So I'll do that again, try and even that out. All through here, I hit this all with just a hand polisher. Just trying to go for the same look here as over here. Now I'm gonna give this all another cream coat once it's dry and repeat this process. Each process goes a little bit quicker and quicker. You can see I just need to fill in right in these areas, but I'll cream coat the whole area again, much thinner this time. So I'll let these dry, come back tonight. Okay, getting down to the final steps. I came up last night, maybe yesterday afternoon, and put a second cream coat on here. You can see it's just real light, real thin compared to my first coat. Just hit everything again, working it in to all the little voids that I saw. So I'll get this polished off real quick. Okay, so that second coat just comes off really fast. Look how nice that looks. So what I'm doing with these hand pads, where it's kind of clumped up on this edge, I leave a little and take a little. I don't want to see a solid black line here. But a little bit here and there, I think, really adds to it. 
I put some more on the face. And then these corners just need hit by hand. If I hit these corners with the machine, the edges really wear down the pads. And then I get too much of the cream coat off right behind it. So just these little, you know, corners. Flooding it with water so it washes the material away. You can see how quickly that comes off of there until you get the look that you're looking for. Kind of consistent through the entire surface as far as the blotchiness goes. Like, I don't want to just leave this black spot here. I want to break it down a little bit so it matches here. polished I just squirted them off so they're drying uh, and then I'll do a, I'll do a final cleaning uh, get all the little dust particles and everything off of there coat a sealer and they are ready for installation almost um, why is it important to grind that surface off first before you cream coat that top layer of concrete is the weakest part of the concrete all the, all the bleed water comes up through the mix, sets on the top, and weakens it. So you grind that all off, and it's only, oh boy, not even a 64th. It's just a thin layer of weak residue cement. Just like in our rolled slate, how we go in and scrub that top surface off. Uh, only this is covered with plastic, so we're trapping that bleed water in there. So we want to grind that all off. Now we're down to solid concrete. This is durable concrete. Less likely to scratch if you hit it with a knife or, or uh, you know, um, a whiskey bottle or frying pan or something. It, it's going to be a lot more durable than if we just cream coated on top of that. So grind that all off, then start your cream coating. Two, two layers. Did a real nice job. Give you a real close up there. And I really like the veining that we get through there with our plastic. And every set I do, I do more and more of the folds in the plastic. I think I could have even done more. Like this is really nice. Couple more, couple more big ones through here, I think would have really been sharp. I got a couple nice ones over here. I just think adds so much to it. Like, look at that, isn't that cool looking? Right up to the sink's edge. Around the face of the sink. Now the sink gets mounted under here. More of that veining I'm talking about. So as you notice, this is a mess in here. I leave this water on the floor and that keeps all my dust down. Uh, I'll do a final cleaning here tomorrow on the countertops. The floor will still be soaking wet. Uh, that way I'm not kicking up any dust whenever I'm sealing. If I had a bigger shop where I could do this, maybe it'd be different, but this is where I'm at and that's how I do it. Come on back tomorrow for sealing.